Hi, I'm Rachel and my brand is Rachel C. Snail Shoes and I wanted to show you how to sew uppers for these fabric sandals that I've been making. Uh, they look like this. Uh, so today I'm just going to show you how to sew this fabric portion here and then um, you can either build it into a sandal or have them sent and made into a sandal for you. And I should mention that you can make the fabric part out of any fabric from your stash. Maybe uh, use up small bits of, and pieces from other projects or make sandals to match your outfit or something. This was an old J. Crew shirt and this was like a tiny bit of fabric left over from a curtain. Um, so hope you have about two square feet of something for the exterior and about two square feet for the interior. And then we're going to make piping. Um, you'll need about four square, four linear feet of piping, or you can skip that step and I'll explain that. Um, so, um, here are some, uh, patterns for the upper shape. And maybe you got this as a PDF or maybe I mailed it to you, but we're going to cut this shape out and test it on your foot. So I'm like a size eight and a half. I'm going to cut it to the size nine shape just to be safe. Then um, you can just put your foot on a low stool or on the ground and we're just going to drape this over your foot, just showing about four toes, not really ever five. I guess it's up to you, but I usually just show four. <laughs> and make sure it's even over your foot. And what we're looking for is about one inch extra tab that's hitting the ground after it drapes all around. So I've got that on both sides, it's looking good. So this is a good shape for my foot. If you're left with only like a little bit of space, like a half inch or something, I would just recut it with a larger margin out here. You know, you could trace this and cut it larger or add tape um, to both sides to make it wider. But you're looking for at least one inch along that whole area. And if you want to, you could cut this shape at a curve or cut this as a deeper V. You can modify this pattern as much as you would like. But that's it. So I'm gonna cut out two of this as my exterior fabric. All right, and then same pattern on a material that you'll use for your lining, the very inside that's gonna touch your feet. And I should mention that I chose a fabric for the exterior that is, in my case, I chose a dark color in case it gets dirty and it's a kind of fine wool um, that I thought is just a little more durable than say cotton or something, but I've made them out of cotton and it worked just fine. So you can use anything. Okay, and then um, I'm now tracing this pattern on 
puffy woolen batting, but you could use cotton batting, polyester batting, um, or even just some like soft cloths in between these two layers. Um, I'm gonna suggest that you do two or three of these per shoe. So I'm gonna trace out four of these shapes. And it's okay if these are a little smaller than your pattern because they're gonna fit inside. So there's one. Um, now that you've used that pattern to cut out your exterior, your lining, and your stuffing, you could just sew these together, um, like the exterior and the lining, inside out, so face to face, sew along here, sew along here, and then turn them inside out and put the stuffing in, and that would be totally sufficient, and you'd have these really clean edges and then we'll quilt the upper. But I'm gonna show you this other way where we make piping for these edges and sew them together using the piping. But I just wanted to point out that you could um, just sew them straight up without that kind of uh, piping. Another idea is to use bias tape or edging material, like even a folded ribbon, um, and sew that on each edge before you put the stuffing in. So. Okay, I'm gonna show you though my favorite way of doing the edges, which is to make little quarter inch uh, cotton cord piping. Um, so to make the piping, you wanna cut long strips of fabric um, diagonally against the weave, uh, about an inch and a half or two inches wide. And like I mentioned, you'll want about four feet strips. And so if you don't have fabric that that's, that's four feet long, you would just cut a few strips and sew them together. to wrap this quarter inch cotton cord with my fabric and then I put on a zipper foot so the needle can get really close to the edge here get really as close as possible to that cord drop the foot down like that and try to use thread that matches the piping color so it all looks seamless. So just make sure your good facing sides of the fabric are both facing inside to each other and you're going to place your piping just on the inside here, sandwiched in between, and then use that same foot to get really close. Like that. Make sure we're all lined up.
And same with the curving side. The only difference is I like to do a few relief slits here and the center and here again because it's going to allow this to curve more with this shape. in anything I just check it as I go <laughs> So then we can just flip it inside out and make sure that our lines are good. So yeah, it looks pretty good to me. Um, if ever you have like a little extra room, you could always flip it back inside out and sew it a little tighter near your piping, but this all looks pretty tight. So I'll just go ahead and do the other one and then put the stuffing in. Uh, I'm just going to trim the extra fabric really close to the stitch line. And you can use pinking shears or not. But that's just going to make it easier for the stuffing to nestle in really close to the edges. Once you do that, you can turn it inside out. And then I'll grab my two layers that I want to put inside. They're looking a little bulky, but I'm going to just try it anyway. Ideally, you want to get them to kind of settle in a place where they can lay flat and not be totally bunchy. It's pretty close. I think mine is bunching a little more than I would like. So I might take them out, trim just a little margin off of the flat side, and try again. I mean, it pretty much works. Like once I sew all my quilted lines in it, it will lie flat, so maybe it is okay. I'll leave it. Um, okay, and I'll do that to the other one, and then we're gonna sew lines through the whole thing to make it quilted. So now that I have my batting pulled into place and it's laying pretty flat, I just like to do back and forth lines about a centimeter or three eighths of an inch thick back and forth and back and forth to create this or to make this into like a solid um, quilted object. 
So it's really up to you. You could do zigzags, you could go this way, you could do a spiral, but this is the way I usually do it. So I will show you. whole inch uh, zone because that's not going to be all tucked underfoot um, so that doesn't need to be very clean it can be messy and this is where you can turn your stitches around As you get uh, towards the end of your piece, um, it'll be kind of crowded here and maybe have a lot of space back here, so I just start to split the difference. roughly the same size. Don't sweat it if they're a tiny bit different from each other. And I would just cut off all this excess um, stuffing that's coming out on the sides. And then um, you've done the, you've made your uppers and now it's either time to assemble them into the sandal and follow the instructions for the sandal making portion or um, you can send these off uh, to have them uh, be made into sandals for you and I'll give you instructions on how to do that but I'm excited to offer that as a option um, so thanks for making these um, so I have this sandal that's um, partially made as just a, a demonstration of what it will be like when it's almost finished so you're gonna pull this upper through these long slots and tape them, check the fit, glue the tabs down, sky them so they're not be able to be felt under your foot, and then eventually um, this upper will get glued to the sandal base with all these pulled tight in and hammered together and nailed and you'll have your completed sandal once the edges are sanded. <laughs> 